All right. Well, uh, thank you so much, Laura, for helping with my project. I really appreciate it. No problem. Uh, so we I were just talking. I hope I can do really good for you. You know. <laughs> um, I, I have I have good feelings about this one. Good. Um, <laughs> and so you were just asking me about telling you my own words about my project. Um, in 2019, I got really excited about us going back to the moon potentially having people on the moon by 2024. Um, and so there's this uh, administrator at NASA who had a little lapel pin counting down the days to the end of 2024. And he was going around NASA highlighting a person who was helping to get us there. And somehow I got this idea of doing the same type of thing with ordinary people that are outside of NASA. And so in 2019, I started this project of interviewing a person a day to the end of 2024. And, wow. Uh, I haven't missed a day yet. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, and I love your background, by the way. <laughs> I know. Isn't it amazing to think that, uh, uh, you know, everybody is, uh, you know, on that little bitty ball up there? I mean, I think that yeah. perspective would be mind blowing uh, for people to actually see. Wow, very neat. I like I like space. I always liked uh, stuff about space, you know. And I'm glad we're going to the moon again. I hear you're close enough to be able to uh, watch the rocket launches. Actually, we have seen stuff. Okay, from here. Um, we have, I have actually gone and seen one in person. Okay. Um, and actually Mel was there and my granddaughter and we actually went, we were actually in Coco beach and we actually went and, uh, I don't, uh, I think Mel was doing some kind of thing with the television program and then they go, Oh, the launch is going to happen. So we all headed for the beach and we actually got to see a, a launch in person. But uh, where we are there, we, if you're in the right area and, you know, you can actually, sometimes we can actually see launches um, or see, you know, um, things going over like you know uh you know like uh, sometimes you know uh we're in the path of the you know um but i think my biggest thrill was um i actually took mel to north dakota to graduate um from university of north carolina uh, north dakota and the really neat thing was is that somebody had built kind of like a little um observatory in the middle of this farmland so we all hightailed it over there and you could see you know it was away from the city lights so you could see all the stars and everything and my biggest thrill was that i got to see the space station going over you know and it was so neat and I was like oh guess because you know I've never seen that before you know and um that was the that was like one of my greatest experiences you know I I just loved it so uh, how much detail could you see of the space station you really couldn't see much, but you could see it going over. So in other words, you they knew exact, you know, when it was actually gonna, you know, um, cross the sky and you could see, you couldn't see anything much except for you saw this thing just cross the sky ever so slowly. And it was so neat, you know, I mean, it wasn't slow, slow, but for me, I was like, 
I was in awe. I couldn't, I didn't want to blink. I couldn't take my eyes off it. So you really couldn't see much that it was the space station, but you knew it was some satellite going over. And it was just, it was one of my biggest thrills because um, the, I've always loved, you know, the planets, you know, and astronomy. I was never really good at it. I never learned a lot in school. However, um, that ranked up there uh, with when I actually went to one of our observatories here and actually got to see Saturn through the telescope. So it was, you know, that stuff like that really thrills me. And um, I, I'm glad that I'm here in South Florida to be able to once in a while experience, um, you know, something like um, the first, uh, one of the first uh, launches. Um, and forgive me, it's been so long ago that I don't remember the name, but um, they came across, it was the one with the, the chimp that came across and and it actually came over our house. Oh you know, wow! One of, one of the one of the um, you know, it was so neat. And I, and so we actually we all ran out the backyard. We could actually see, you know, I mean, you know, you couldn't see it was a rocket or anything like that. But you actually saw, you know, something almost like you would see a a very slow moving star you know falling star or something but very slow moving and just seeing it go right across the sky and i was very thrilled about that you know so in fact uh, i i just you know i would love to see another launch you know that's pretty yeah. amazing oh, i thought so. what is your first space or your earliest space memory my earliest space memory was um, actually John Glenn and actually before that the launch with um, Gordon Cooper I think it was um, but but our what really sticks in my mind is when John Glenn uh, went up you know and did the uh, because they made a very big deal in school and I was like I said, I was always into, you know, astronomy and all that. And to hear that he actually went up, you know, um, you know, one revolution around the earth, whatever, and came back down. And, and it was just a big thrill because nobody had ever done that before. You know, and then, the, then what, I was thrilled that for him is he had actually having to go up again, you know, many years later, um, you know, that had to be like, you know, a, a once in a lifetime thing. You did it once. Now you get to do it again, you know? So, yeah. Oh, and I do have another one too. Okay. <laughs> it is, we went to, um, we went to, you know, Kennedy Space Station, uh, Space Station, you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, I got you. And, um, we were on a tour of, you know, um, you know, you take the bus and they take you around to like some of the launch pads and this, uh, and they, they, we were in the, uh, one of, uh, where they stored some of the, you know, like, the rockets and stuff like that and what they said was and I, I'm sorry I, I don't remember which uh which space shuttle it was but they all said quickly quickly everybody go out the building because the space shuttle is coming and I I'm not sure if it was a Columbia maybe maybe Columbia I'm not sure and they said come out, come out, because it's going to land. So we all ran out there and we waited and here it came overhead 
you know, and everybody on the tour was like, ooh, ah, you know, it was really neat, you know, and, and just to see that and be able to witness that in person, you know, I, I was thrilled to death because that's something, you know, you have to be there, you know, you have to know when they're happening. You know, you don't always know that because maybe they can't come back because of weather or something like that. So they maybe have to, you know, land in Houston or, or you know, wherever they do. And I think that was, the, you know, uh, that was like, I was in awe as well, you know, because I got to, and my family was with me and we, we just looked up and here it came right over our heads you know to go to the to the their launch site you know i enjoyed it very much i do you remember how old you were uh when buzz and neil landed on the moon in 1969 um that was 1970 right uh 1969 69 yeah okay so uh, I was, six, wait a minute, I have to start calculating. <laughs> um, so uh, I was 15, I was 15 years old. Um, and that was in July, if I remember correctly. And um, to hear that, we landed on the moon and they and and they actually walked on the moon was like it, it was it was just unreal you know like you it, it's like you don't how do i put it i'm not there i can't can never the moon i can never go to i well i never want to go to the moon but i i believe you know a lot there's people that don't believe that we were on the moon but i'm not one of those people and i thought that was that was a wonderful wonderful experience you know to be able to have that in my lifetime did you uh, watch so it on good. tv with your family or at school or i mean how did you see it uh, did you watch it uh, with your family or did you watch it at school or how, how did you come to watch the moon landing? No, um, actually, because it was the summertime. So um, uh, it was, yeah, so I was home and um, I actually didn't, I don't believe I actually saw them, you know, I, I, I did see video of them. Um, you know, walk, you know, the, like everything that they did, you know, taking video for just like what's in back in the back of you. But what would I really liked, um, what I always was fascinated by is how they, when these guys came back to earth and, you know, the ships had to go, you know, the ships went and, you know, got them and, and, open the their little hatch so that they could come out and i you know i was always like you know i i wouldn't want to be in that thing going oh my god are, did they find me yet you know <laughs> are they gonna find me you know um so that was it you know i, I used to love to watch all that stuff you know um these guys and i love movies about space and especially when it's, um, I don't like the fiction stuff. I mean, like I like, you know, Star Trek and all that stuff. But I think my favorite movie about space is Apollo 13. Mm. Because I thought it was very well done. And there's a couple of actors in there. I really, I love Gary Sinise. He's one of my favorite actors. And, you know, and Tom Hanks. But. It was, you know, 
just to hear the stories of things like that, you know, um, and how they had to try and, you know, get these guys back home. I, w I just was amazed, you know, and I, I could watch that movie like a million times over, you know, because that's, that's, you know, that's, my, that's me. That's what, that was real. That really happened. That is three and a half hours from my house, you know? Um, so technically I could really go and, and, and watch this. I've never, I've never gotten to, uh, meet any astronauts or any of that but i'm just very thrilled about just the whole program in itself you know and that's my that's my absolute favorite movie i mean i've seen others but that's my absolute favorite space movie especially uh how they came back it's like the uh ernest shackleton adventure of space yeah I, you know, I'm kind of an unusual person because when I saw that movie for the first time and I saw all those engineers all together trying to figure out, you know, how they're going to do that and everything like that, um, Mel probably wouldn't tell you this, uh, maybe, maybe Mel would, however, I was married to an engineer who was kind of like that, okay? And I don't mean to go into my life. This is probably not what you're looking for, but um, I was married to Mel's father for 15 years and he, we had things that nobody else had. I mean, he, they were exper experimenting with satellite dishes and cable TV and everything like that, long before anybody had cable in their house, you know, um, there were programs, you know, and, and channels up on the satellites, you know, wrote, um, you know, uh, <laughs> Going around the earth and, you know, I would come home and things would be missing in my house, you know, like um, a paper towel. I have this paper, antique paper towel holder that could, I couldn't find it. And I said, where's my, you know, where's my paper towel holder? Oh, you wanted that thing? I go, yeah, you know, your mother gave it to me. Whatever. Oh, well, it's, it's my base of my satellite dish. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right. And then, and then, okay. Then I got a call at work one day. And it was, okay. So would you like, um, I'm, you know, our grocery store, would you want like a, you know, a 12 ounce can of this or a 14 ounce can of that or whatever. And, and I had like, oh, and I said, yeah, okay. Yeah. Go ahead and get me that. And when I got home, I opened the refrigerator to make dinner and I see the strange bowl in my, um, refrigerator that I did not have you know, when I left for work that day hmm. and I opened it and it was one of the things that I said he could buy and he, he emptied the can, put the, put the contents in the refrigerator and he put this can as part of the, um, the middle of the satellite, you know, dish that would, you know, and I was like, what happened to the can? I don't even know what kind it is. Oh, I used it. I just put the stuff in the refrigerator, you know. So I lived like that for 15 years, you know, and it was amazing, you know, some of the stuff he came up with. So I kind of feel that in a 
removed sort of way, I live with guys that they had to take duct tape and whatever, whatever to make, um, sorry, <laughs> somebody was trying to contact me. Um, you know, and, and all of a sudden it was like, you know, that's, I lived with a guy like that. You know, I lived with the nerdy guy with the glasses and the hair all over the place who could put anything together, you know, as it was amazing, you know. Um, wait a minute, let me get rid of, I'm going to get rid of this person um, on my chat, hopefully. But anyway, so it, it was kind of neat, you know, um, I'm kind of a nerdy space person like that. <laughs> I mean, I was lucky though, <laughs> you know, and I was lucky to see the beginning of the space program. I don't remember Sputnik or any of that stuff. I was too little, but, you know, to see, you know, um, uh, when they did the Mercury program, when they did the Gemini program, the Apollo program, then they started to have, you know, the space shuttles, you know, and all. It was, it was amazing, you know, and I'm so glad to have witnessed that, you know, but anyway. Um, so, so in 1972, uh, Apollo 17 takes off from the moon. That's the last time anybody steps foot on the moon. Uh, what did you think about that? I was kind of... Um, one second, oh, never mind. Um, I was kind of, uh, in a way, I won't say I was sad about it, but I was kind of ready to go say, okay, what's happening next? What are we going to do next? We've been on the moon. Okay. What, what, what's all you know, what's the next step to our space program? And I know we had to stop for, you know, um, for quite a while, you know, and though, even though we were, you know, throughout the years, you know, we were sending, you know, um, you know, to say, let's go, you know, here, we're going to, we're going to launch this, uh, rocket and we're going to try and get you know information on Mar from mars and jupiter and and you know and i thought that was that was interesting to me on which way we're going to go i'm not sure and i guess and i'll never see this in my lifetime that you know we're going to one day be able to hop a you know a shuttle and go okay Come on, let's take a day trip to the Mar to Mars, or you know, or you know, take a week to Mars or whatever. You know, um, that to me is surreal. I'm not sure that I would even, un you know, be able to fathom that because I know how it takes very long to get to where, you know, to it took a long enough to get to the moon. You know, just but you know, now you're going to Mars. You know, uh, I, I don't, you know, I, I, I can't imagine that. I guess maybe in my next life, wherever I am, you know, I'll be doing that. I'll be, okay, come on, let's go visit grandma on Jupiter, you know, or something like that. You know, I think that's exciting. I in think the that is. In the 1960s and 1970s, when the Apollo was happening, did the thought ever cross your mind? It's just a matter of time before I get to take a trip to the moon or, I mean. Yeah. I think I'd be too afraid. <laughs> I think I would, I really think I would be, I don't think I'd be that, those, those people that are go, okay, I'm, you know, I'm jumping on the shuttle. We're going to the moon. You know, I, I'm not big on flying to begin with, you know. Um, and I don't think that they, I think that in the future, I think everything will be safer 
you know, let me use that word. I know we've had a few disasters here and there um, in our space program. Um, you know, some loss of life, some just, you know, oh, well, we lost a few tiles on the bottom of, you know, the space shuttle. Um, but, you know, I mean, to me, it's got to be closer to 100% before I would even get on the, you know, like, uh, I, I have to say that um, when we started to put civilians on, you know, um, you know, some, you know, some of the, you know, like the shuttles, you know, and stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure I would want to be one of those people. Mm. You know, I think there's too much I have to learn about here first. Let them do it. And, and then I can find out what they found out. You know what I mean? I think I would be a little bit too nervous, you know, and then, and then what happens if it's Apollo 13 again, how are they going to rescue me? You know, <laughs> um, just like to, um, I think it's amazing the guys who, you know, have to go out and work on the space station, you know, just tethered by that one little, you know, a call, call it a hose, you know, um, I just, I, it takes a certain type of person to be able to do that, you know, and I, I don't think I would be that person, you know, I'm not sure I could even live it. I probably could live in the space station, you know, it's just getting there and coming back. I'm not sure I could do. Uh, when you think about the future of humanity, like 100, 200 years from now, do you think we're still all on the Earth? Or do you think we've actually created settlements in other places in the solar system? I don't think it's going to, I think it's going to be longer than 100 or 200 years. I think eventually um, we'll be, we'll, you know, I'm, it's going to have to be centuries that we'll be doing that. We'll be, you know, visiting other places, kind of like, you know, here you you want to go to Europe, you, you know, take a plane or a boat or something. And I think that's going to be in the future, but I think that's way far in the future. Hmm. I don't think it'll be in the next couple of hundred years. It could, but I don't think so. I think it's going to be more like 500 to a thousand years because even though technology has started, I mean, I'm going to say, okay, so here, uh, I'll give you an example. I never thought in my lifetime I'd be talking to somebody on my phone, <laughs> you know, um, even though I went to the World's Fair and experienced video phone. Oh, right okay. here. 64 they had um the new york world's fair was 64 and 65 i believe and okay. i went there to, and they had pavilions different pavilions you know and the at&t pavilion the dupont pavilion you know everybody had one you know um, coca-cola had one and like for instance at g you go you go into the telephone company and i remember uh having a video phone call in the next cubicle was my cousin you know and we were talking about that and i thought this is never going to happen <laughs> you know this is very interesting it's a great experiment and i'm sure my cousin you know uh probably thought the same thing and here we are not only talking on the phone I have internet on my phone. I can check my email on my phone. There are so many different things I could do. I, I never in my wildest dreams ever thought that, you know, this could happen. And my very first cell phone was a brick. Mm -hmm. You know, it was twice the size of my cell phone. It had a big, long antenna. 
And I actually, I think I actually left it one day on, on my car to because I was putting stuff in my car and I think I, I don't know if I ran over it or I just lost it. But, <laughs> but you know, um, I think this is amazing. You know, um, I talked to my granddaughter when I was, when I was, I'll say, um, maybe six or seven, you know, um, we moved down here. I was, I was almost six years old. We had three television stations. Okay. Now I, now I tried to explain to my granddaughter, we didn't have a hundred or 200 stations on the television. I had to watch the three stations and they signed off. They weren't even 24 hours. They signed off at midnight or 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. with the, you know, national anthem. And then in the morning they signed on with the national anthem. And, and you saw, I said, you can never, you have no idea. I rem I'll give you an example of my mom. My mother was born in 1932, okay? My mother, um, my father decided he was going to buy a color TV. Okay. And my mother says, I don't want any part of it. And my mother, my, my father was like, yeah, but I want to watch the football games and call her, you know, he was, and he gets a color TV. Okay. And my mother walks past it, ignores it. She goes in the bedroom, watches her little black and white. She's very happy with that. My mother was um, loved like horror movies. And back in the day, horror movies were not like Freddy Krueger and all those, you know. But she comes in, and I think I was watching the television, and there was an afternoon movie. And it was called Murders of the Rue Morgue. And what it is is like uh, they, the one of the what the scene that she comes in on is a fireplace with blood dripping down, you know, and it's like, and all of a sudden this body falls out, you know, and it's like, you know, and my mother was hooked, and my father would have to go in the bedroom and watch his, ah. his football games on the black and white TV. <laughs> so, you know, I mean. I've seen so much in my lifetime, you know, with technology and, and, you know, I mean, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. I think I had a, a, a very good time that I lived, you know. That's a wonderful story. I got to tell you from my uh, 25 years of being married, I completely understand how situations like that come about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was, it was it was good. All right. You know, and I, and I'm thinking of my mom who didn't even have television. Okay. When she was growing up, they listened to the radio. Okay. And here comes the television, television in the fifties, you know, and I mean, and then comes the sixties and then color comes out. And then, you know, I mean, imagine what she saw in her lifetime. You know, and, and I think that's amazing. So, you know, I mean, she even got to see, uh, you know, Kennedy Space Center and she got to see the shuttle going over us. And, you know, so this is something that she would have never fathomed growing up, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's really, really neat. Well, Laura, I, I see this project as being a time capsule for people not even born yet to look back on and kind of get different perspectives on what I think is going to be a pivotal decade. I know we talked about a lot of things. Is there anything that we didn't talk about that you wanted to? I'm not sure. Um, I think that In my, in my opinion, okay, I think that there needs to be more um, for our future. I think, I think the public needs to be more educated on the space program, you know, um, on what's out there. We don't know what's out there. We don't know what's out there beyond 
Pluto, poor Pluto, who doesn't know if he's a planet or not. Okay. Uh, I'm uh, sorry, I, I, uh, I think uh, I, I was clicking the ask to unmute just as you clicked on mute, which became the mute button. So that's <laughs> somebody, yeah, somebody's, somebody's. Now, nobody ever calls me. Now I'm getting calls and texts and all kinds of stuff. Um, but anyway, you know, it's like, like, like when they. That's one thing that really bothered me when they told me that Pluto was no longer a planet. And it bothered me because I said, I grew up, there was nine planets and the sun. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, you know, then all of a sudden they're telling me that my, that Pluto, who we have never really see, see this spec and, and, you know, we'll never get to it for years and years and years. And you're telling me it's not a planet. I'm not okay with that. And then they came back and said, well, yeah, we're going to call it a planet because, you know, and I, and that part, I just want to know, I just want you to know, I was really bothered by that, you know? Because I know what I learned in school and I didn't care what they said. As far as I was concerned, Pluto was still a planet. It never was not a planet. So I just wanted to bring that up. <laughs> and I think um, that that's, uh, yeah, I, I remember seeing a t-shirt at the Johnson Space Center gift shop and it has uh, Pluto and it's like, your mom thought I was big enough. <laughs> 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 oh, I'll tell you, I, I'm just, I'm just amazed at what we've learned just in our planets. I can't imagine going past, you know, and, and, and finding another galaxy with, you know, people like us. I mean, I, I, I think about, and I'm so sorry to, to do this to you, but anyway, um, so I think about a, uh, I believe it was a, um, like a twilight zone episode you know and i'm thinking you know um if we're going you know like where does it end where does space end you know because in in this episode it was like you know um they had these um uh, i guess they were astronauts or whatever and you realized that this that the end of space was really, it was kind of like a, a box, you know, or type of thing. And that was the end of them. You know, that was the end of the, the, you know, the end of space. And I'm thinking, is there an end of space? You know, that's, I would like to know that. Or, you know, how is it that, you know, Maybe there is no end. Space is infinite. You know, I just can't imagine. You know, I think that's maybe too much, you know, blows your mind kind of in a way because you're going, you know, is there an end? Are we the end? Mm -hmm. You know, what's past that? You know, I know you see a million stars out there, especially if you go away from the city, you know, um, I just, I just can't imagine that this goes on forever and ever and ever, you know, and, and, and no, there's no end. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's kind of neat. I think that's, I think that's something, you know, I don't know. I, I think that's something beyond anybody's, um, that anybody can really, you know, grasp knowledge wise and stuff, you know? I know that they say these all these stars are out there and they're a million miles away and whatever. But really, are they? And what are they? And are there, you know, are they other people, other galaxies, planets, you know? And what what are those people saying? You know, what are they going? Oh, look at the Milky Way. Well, yeah, well, there's nothing there, you know. So it's kind of neat. I I just. I just can't imagine, I can't fathom that, you know, uh, that's how it's going to be. That's all the way the end of, you know, it, it's just, 
you know, infinity, you know? So uh, that's, that's my, that's my take on it. That's my thoughts. <laughs> Is there well, anything uh, you want to talk about? Well, I think we covered everything I had on the top of my mind. So, okay. but uh, Laura, I really appreciate your time. It was such a pleasure to get to talk to you. Same here. I really enjoyed myself. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. Uh, you have a good rest of your night and hopefully we'll cross paths again. I would love that. Take care of yourself, okay? Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.